insects and other organisms uh, that aren't active in the winter uh, will need to survive till next spring to be able to come out and reproduce. So they don't just disappear completely, but they go into some sort of resting stage where they reduce their activity. They basically hibernate. When you think about bears and other mammals and other big animals, it's a very similar thing with insects. Different insect species will overwinter at different stages. So some lay eggs that overwinter, others overwinter as pupae, cocoons, or even larvae. Uh, but there are some groups that overwinter as adults. And as adults in the fall, they're going to try and find places that are suitable for hibernating. Uh, this is usually natural areas mm -hmm. like under bark of dead logs or trees, uh, in leaf litter, mm -hmm. other areas. But our homes also provide a good area for them to hibernate. And so sometimes we get these nuisance invaders, especially in the fall when it starts to cool and they're looking for ways to hibernate. These insects will come in in the fall, so people see an influx at that time of year, uh, but they will also see them in the spring when they've woken up from their hibernation and start to leave the house. And so those are the two main periods when you're often going to see these nuisance invaders. And there are a few major groups that are commonly found. So the first major group are some of the bugs, the true bugs. These are insects with sucking mouth parts uh, that often feed on plants. Uh, and the ones that enter homes most commonly are stink bugs, box elder bugs, and leaf-footed bugs. I would say stink bugs are the most common invader, especially in the western part of the state. Uh, the brown marmorated stink bug is a species that's not native and has been in the U.S. for over 20 years. And it is very common and commonly does this behavior where it will enter homes in the fall looking for a hibernation site. But in many areas, box elder bugs are also a species that are involved in this. Now, after the bugs, the true bugs, uh, there are some beetles, uh, especially ladybugs. So ladybugs often overwinter as adults. They can enter homes in hundreds to sometimes thousands. Uh, and they can actually pose a nuisance threat uh, that can be a little bit more serious than the other insects uh, because they sometimes they will reflex bleed a noxious substance from their legs, which can stain skin or uh, materials in the home. And also they've been known to bite in large numbers. So even though they're beautiful and people love ladybugs, they can become a severe nuisance at certain times of the year. Another true bug is the kudzu bug. It's a relatively recent one. It looks like a small olive or brown ladybug. And these are common, especially outside of soybean fields and associated with other legumes like kudzu. And these will also overwinter as adults and congregate on trees and homes uh, where they may enter in numbers. Another group that will enter homes are some flies. So uh, there is a specific group called cluster flies that are actually called cluster flies because they often cluster in attics. And these are a, a type of blowfly that actually parasitizes earthworms during the warm parts of the year. But these flies and a couple other groups of flies can sometimes be found in numbers in attics and in homes. And lastly, uh, the social wasps. So paper wasps, hornets, things like that. Uh, what happens is at the end of the year when the colony dies, one survives uh, or a few survive that are mated queens and they will overwinter as a queen and hibernate as a queen that get ready to produce a new nest in the spring. Uh, oftentimes uh, people see them in the spring when they're leaving, uh, but you can see them in the fall as well. Now they're not likely to be aggressive at that time, but because they are a stinging wasp, they have the potential to sting. It's hard to say. So it depends on the per on the house a lot of times, the architecture of the house. Uh, you know, if it's on a slab, if it's got a crawl space, um, all these different ways. You know, if your kitchen is on, on the ground floor, they may come in there. But for instance, um, I get them more in my basement than in my kitchen because the kitchen is kind of on the second story technically. Um, so it's uh, it, oftentimes a lot of these, especially wingless insects, uh, they um, will crawl and spiders too. They'll have to crawl. And so they typically are found in the basements and the lower levels first. Insects will be seen uh, in most parts of the house uh, at first when they're coming in, but the most common area that they tend to settle in is the attic. So insects like to crawl up 
and uh, they may even come in in the attic. And that's most oftentimes where we see these uh, critters congregate. 